Well, I'm joined now by Dr. Bev McKenzie, the Technical and Policy Director at the IMRest. Uh, fantastic to meet you. Thank you very much indeed for coming in. Um, let's talk about plastics and pollution. There's an awful lot of noise about plastics in the ocean. Is that the biggest threat we face? You're correct that there's an awful lot of noise about plastic pollution, but sadly the ocean is facing a multitude of threats. Um, the ocean itself, societies that live near the coast, um, people who rely on ocean resources. The threats include climate change, sea level rise, um, overfishing, illegal fishing, invasive species, and the list goes on and on. And there are some emerging threats that we just don't understand at the moment. Deep sea mining, for example, may cause lots of threats to deep sea ecosystems, and we just don't know what those are. Um, so when you ask, is, the, is plastic the biggest threat? Well, unfortunately, all these threats are combining. Um, they're affecting everybody. They're affecting some communities much more than others, and some of these communities are already very vulnerable. So what we're doing at the IMRest is we have a number of technical special interest groups. They bring experts together to discuss these issues and to come up with some solutions. It's so important that we get the best experts, the best people in science, the best people in engineering and technology, policymakers, social scientists together to help us address these threats as a community. And what we really need people to do is inspire and nurture the next generation of marine scientists, engineers and all marine professionals because they're the people that are really going to make a difference. The problem is, once that uncertainty, as it were, filters down to the public, there is a general kind of distrust, isn't there? How do you ensure that people really trust the scientists and the science that's coming out and that your key messages really do land with members of the public? It's a really good question and it's really twofold. First, we have the individuals, the individual scientists and the engineers. How do we ensure the public can have trust in those individuals? First of all, the IMRS brings together people with a really strong, consistent view of the oceans, and that's we have to use them safely and we have to use them sustainably. But what we also do as an addition is we offer professional registration um, and certification for those professionals. What that means is they're acting in accordance um, with a certain code of conduct, a code of ethics, um, and they are assessed to, uh, to be certain, uh, to have some certain competencies and to be a certain standard. So that really helps the public know that those professionals are really good. It's like visiting a doctor. You want to know that that is a professional person that you're seeing. They're making big decisions that are affecting the future of our planet. So they need to be competent. You've got a very big message. Our government's listening. The next generation are really imploring governments to do things. But governments make very short timescale decisions and some governments overturn policies of previous governments and alter them. The IMRS is really unique in that we, are, we always have a con constant and consistent message and that is based on strong technical le leadership, ethics and high standards. What we also do is we make sure that the emerging marine activities are managed properly that they are sound environmentally, sus uh, they're sustainable, they're safe, uh, technology is, is well beyond to regulations. We have no axe to grind, um, we are completely impartial. So what we do for government, for policy makers, for decision makers, is we provide them with sound, scientifically based evidence to help them make the best decisions. What we also do is when new legislation is brought in, we make sure that the people are actually working with that legislation can use it, that it's practical and it can be implemented by the community. And let's look to the future of the industry. It's definitely changing, isn't it? Tech is really taking a much stronger role. Um, how is that going to change the workforce going forward? Well, as we enter um, Industry 4.0, as it's coined, um, we're really seeing um, digitisation, automation being adopted across the marine sector. But we also see it on a day-to-day -day basis in our everyday lives. Um, it's becoming interwoven and a larger part of our, our everyday lives. So I think it's fair to say society will um, adapt and it'll innovate simultaneously. Now in the marine sector what that means is we're going, going to see some new emerging trends. We may see fully automated ships. We're certainly going to see our oceans observed much better. We're going to know more about our oceans. What this means is we're going to need people with different skills. 
we're going to need people who have skills in statistics, in data management, um, more engineers, design engineers, for example. But that doesn't mean to say traditional skills need to be lost. We still need traditional seafaring skills, for example. What becomes crucial is that there's a two-way communication between the older generation and the younger generation. By two-way, we need to make sure the traditional skills are passed down to the younger generation, but the younger generation are helping the older people with the adoption of the skills. Um, so for the IMA rest, it's really important, A, that we, we kind of recognise this, but also that we provide mentoring, that we can uh, allow our older, more experienced mentors to pass down their knowledge and vice versa, to learn from the younger people. Um, Bev, let's just talk about gender. You are an amazing role model to the rest of the sector with a very senior position as a woman. It's awful to actually even talk about it, but how is that going to rebalance? Because traditionally it's a male dominated sector and that does need to change. It is, and we've seen some really brilliant initiatives this year about empowering women in our sector. World Maritime Day this year and World Ocean Day both focused on empowering women in the marine sector. And technology is likely to play a very significant role. We hope, perhaps, that the advent of technology will disband the idea of an eight-hour office-based working day, allowing much more flexibility for people to, to take up these careers and new careers. But we also hope that it doesn't discriminate against women. There's a potential that an already disadvantaged community, um, older women, for example, or people with less formal education, people who've taken careers gap, might be left behind by this advancing technology. So at the IMRS, we've recognised this as a problem. We've established a women's network, and that's to support people who are working industry with some of the challenges they face, but also to look at how we might work in partnership with organisations and also how we build leaders and mentors in the marine sector. It's been fascinating to talk to you. We wish you the very best of luck. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.